Welcome back, everyone. This is another one of our hard powered inspiring interviews. And as you know, every time we introduce you to an amazing leader and thought leader, and this time it's really someone very close to my heart. Today, I give the space to Dr. David Paul. And David is not only one of the leaders, leading um, you know, neuroscience experts, he, he has the greatest heart. I mean, we met uh, in Broughton Hall in the UK at a meeting of the Network for Transformational Leaders, uh, you know, about one and a half years ago now. And uh, he gave another session last year in Davos that I was lucky enough to be there. And you might wonder, why does Monique bring someone that is a neuroscientist expert to you as you're an entrepreneur, you're a speaker, you want to grow your business? Well, you will find out in a minute, but let me introduce you, Dr. David Paul, in a little more detail. David really works as an advisor and organizational specialist, really in large scale, complex, organic change, your psyche and leadership and organizational neuroscience in, in that field. And he's worked with many companies around the world. He's taught more than 27,000 executive MBA students from more than 15 universities. And his passion is really people-centered organizational transformation. And he can transform us in just a blink of an eye, you'll see. And he's also an author he is an academic, he's a practitioner, he's a presenter, he's a mentor to senior executives in the, in, in the C-suite levels. He teaches mindfulness to the top 50 global organizations and governmental departments and not-for-profit organizations. And, you know, he, not that he does have a lot of free time, but he really dedicates some of his time to really support the elderly and their well-being. And every time I've been in touch with you, David, it's been an honor. It's been a pleasure. Every single time I've learned massive amounts of things that how could I actually use my brain and my being to make a greater impact and really become the best version of myself. So it's amazing to have you, David. Thank you so much for having me. It's an honor to be here. Great. So why don't we jump right in? I know it is changing times i know especially also on your side and all our sides there are massive shifts in our life and our work so what do you do right now to stay positive joyful and in the vortex and things keep changing massively right now um very very deep question actually but one of the things that i've done differently that before covid 19 before the pandemic uh, but one of the things I've learned to do is to connect with other people. And what do I mean by connect? It's actually having deep, meaningful and significant conversations as opposed to just the hi, how are you doing? It's actually conversations that connect us on many different levels. And connecting with people is so important right now because we can't actually spend time face to face anymore. Um, so it is always through screens. It's always through um, other media. So that connection now is more critical than ever. The second thing that I do is what I would call vibration. And that is, we haven't had this kind of time ever in our lifetime. And I'm not sure we'll ever have it again. And that is where you get to spend time alone with yourself. And the question that I've asked myself is, Am I vibrating at the highest possible level? In other words, am I dealing with mundane things? Am I dealing with just everyday things? Or am I really thinking about how do I vibrate at a much higher level in terms of my mind, my heart, and my being? So vibration is very important because you can tell when, with, when you're interacting or connecting with someone, are you vibrating at, at the very highest? Of yourself um, and I think it's even more important when you're on screens because you know you're meeting with people are you presenting are you connecting are you being the very very highest vibrational self that you can be and the third thing is resonance and resonance for me is very dear to my heart because resonance is all about ideas so one of the things I ask myself is does this resonate with me does it um, gel with me? Does this idea really put me on fire? So 
resonance is important because right now we have the time to really play with ideas, uh, play with concepts, and I think we should focus on things that really light our fire. So those are the three things, connections, vibrations, and resonance. I love that. And they're all so powerfully connected, right? Because again, when we are connecting with people that touch our heart, you know, there is often a high vibration, right? When we have deeper conversations. And then when we have them, there's a certain resonance as well. So it's, it's beautiful. Right? Yeah. And of course, and, and, other ways. yeah. And, I, and, I, and you asked a very good question because it's all about um, pushing ourselves outside our, our comfort zones, which hopefully we'll come to talk to. But the idea is that unless we're vibrating, we'll never resonate with the things that are around us. Yeah, sounds amazing. And we're going to go deeper into this. So what do you do right now in your business, in your life? I mean, that really helps you grow your business, expand your life, that you feel like, hey, this is also contributing to building stronger connections, raising the vibration and resonance as well so how do you, you know what do you do what are the top three things you do right now to really bring what you do to a higher level so the top three things i do is number one is how do i see my challenges um, some people would call them problems um, but a problem for the mind is always like i need to solve it very quickly but if you look at it as a challenge, your mind goes, what are the different ways I can solve this problem? And I think one of the key things at this time is to look at a problem and go, oh, I've solved it, this, um, this problem this way many, many times. Um, how can I solve it differently? So I look at my business, the organizations that I work with, the people that I advise, and I say to them, don't look at the problem like you've always looked at it. Let's look at it differently. And that's the key is actually is reframing a problem. Um, look at it completely differently because the more you're able to connect with others and reframe a problem, the better it is for your brain. I'm, I'll, and I love talking about the brain, but the idea is when you reframe it, your brain says, ah, oh, I didn't see that before ah, now I know what I need to do. And therefore, you get to solve the problem in a much more creative way. But more importantly, your brain realizes, wow, I've got the tools to do this. Great. Can you maybe give an example of, you know, I mean, even if I, you know, a lot of people say, hey, I'd love to look at things differently. I'd love to reframe things. I'd like to take a new approach. How do I do that? How do I tap into that creativity? To yeah, that's, that's from a different yeah. perspective. Yeah, that, that's actually a very good question. So let me give you um, a generic problem. So imagine you're in the office and the elevator is really slow. So the, the normal solution is, oh, we have to make the elevator go faster um, because it's slow. So you could install a new lift, very expensive. Um, you can upgrade the motor, possibly, or you can improve the computer algorithm. So that's why, that, those are the reasons why it's slow. But if you reframe the problem, you can say, hmm, it's actually the wait time that's annoying, not the fact that it's slow. I just hate waiting in this elevator. So how do you make it feel like you're going faster? So instead of spending millions of dollars putting in a new lift, you might put in um, mirrors in the lift because people always like looking at themselves. Um, you could play some amazing music um, just for the mind to go, oh, I like that song. Um, and in the present times, you could, you could install hand sanitizers because everybody is very pedantic about um, hygiene. So again, that takes a few minutes to kind of, you know, do your hand. And that way, before you know it, you looked at yourself in the mirror, you've enjoyed the music, you've done your hands, and you're at your floor and therefore the wait time is no longer anno uh, annoying it's more like wow i've done some very important things in that short space of time so it's actually looking at the problem in different ways as opposed to going there is only one solution 
yeah. to this particular problem. I love it and I love that I asked for an example because it's such a powerful example. And being an entrepreneur, you know, there's so many ideas that come into my mind of what we could do with the elevator to make it more uh, entertaining, right? And to get people yes. to think and become creative and have fun, right? So it's yes. amazing. Yes. Yeah. It's, and in another, in some other places, um, I suggested that they put up interesting questions in the elevator yeah. that people could ask each other. Yeah. Um, again, it discusses, helps connection. Uh, yeah. And people go, oh, I didn't know you worked in the same department. I yeah, didn't know exactly. you worked in the same area. You know, that kind of exactly. thing. So it's all about stimulating a different way of solving right. a familiar problem. Love it. So now we tackle number one, reframe, look at things from a different perspective. What are the other two? <laughs> um, I think the other, other ways of looking at a problem is to say, how can I get my creative mind to actually work, work on a problem. Mm -hmm. And a famous um, psychologist um, actually wrote an article. His name is uh, Jacob Getzels. He died in um, 2001, um, but he had five, five steps. And let me give them to you. The first step is to actually have an insight. So what is it? that you're trying to solve. And you should talk to people when you're trying to solve a problem. Never do it alone. Always consult people. The second thing is you want to really spend time, um, and this second stage is called saturation. So you want to spend time really thinking about, is this really what I, I want to solve? In other words, do I really want to put a new lift in? Um, and obviously that's not the issue, but that's what you think. The third stage is incubation. Now, incubation is actually very interesting because most people think of incubation as just om, sitting still. But incubation is where you feed your mind all sorts of interesting ideas. So you might do some research, you might uh, go online, you might talk to people, uh, you might talk to the best experts in the world who solved that problem before. But the idea of incubation is fill your mind with the very best. It's like if you're going to buy perf perfume, Go for the best because the essence is what is um, expensive. The third, uh, the fourth stage is illumination. So illumination is all to do with aha moments. So, you know, sometimes um, when you do a task and you suddenly finish it, you suddenly realize, oh my gosh, I solved it. And you don't even realize it. So illumination is the fourth stage. And the last stage is verification, which is where you actually go in. Um, see if you can simplify the process, make it shorter, make it quicker, make it better. So those are the five stages. So first insight, second saturation, third incubation, uh, fourth is illumination, and the last stage is verification. So those are the stages that, that have really helped me think about problems differently. Yeah, I, I love it. And I know that you are someone that you love, you know, helping me helping others, you know, helping the, the top level leaders that you work with um, to really expand and step beyond who they are, right? Um, and, uh, you know, transform themselves to be, become a, the best version of themselves. And uh, I know that you're someone also, you, you guide people to step outside of their comfort zone, right? So right. I think there's also something that you said in, a, in our conversation up front that this is something yeah some of the things that you do to really stretch yourself and stretch yeah. out. You want to say something about that? I think it's so fun. Oh, thank you so much. Uh, that's a brilliant question. And that's really the third point. And that is every day, um, step outside your comfort zone. And that is take a small risk to be uncomfortable. Take a small risk to be in a space where you go, I'm not in control. Um, so, you know, we've heard of control freaks and perfectionists and a whole lot of other people who, who need to know what is happening. But every so often, let go and step outside because that's when you're, you're using different parts of the brain to be able to solve a problem. So stepping out of your comfort zone is actually good for you because it means that you're being creative, you're being um, innovative, and more importantly, you're actually using different parts of your brain. So if you don't want to get early onset of Alzheimer's, step outside your comfort zone. 
Great. And, uh, you know, let's, let's go a little deeper into that, if you don't mind, um, because I have a lot of clients, especially and including myself, right? I mean, we're always expanding what we do, who we are, um, you know, how we make an impact with our business. Uh, and, uh, you know, I, I know that it's sometimes tough, right? I mean, we know we should be doing something or we, we, we know everyone is talking about step out of your comfort zone, but how do we get ourselves to do it? And, how can we do it in a joyful, playful way that expands yeah. things without feeling like we have to fight and slay the inner dragon all the time? So how do we, maybe some suggestions of how to make you, it happen. You've, you've actually given this the answer actually. And that is um, the mind loves to play. Mm -hmm. It loves to have fun. And any problem, if you can turn it into a little bit of joy, laughter, um, you know, for example, when you're riding a bike for the first time or you've forgotten how to ride it, even though you've ridden it, you know, decades ago, the thing is not to get upset when you're not perfect. Because we have this expectation that if I try it, I, I need to be perfect. Well, it's not true. Um, and the mind, if you allow the mind to say, let's have a little bit of joy, a little bit of fun, let me call my best friend Monique and have a chat about this so that we can play as we do this. That way the problem no longer becomes a problem. It becomes a bit more of a creative process mm -hmm. on how we do this. Now uh, you asked me a very good uh, question and that is how do we do this? How do I step outside of my comfort zone? Do I want to do that? So every time you feel uncomfortable, every time your brain says, Oh, don't want to do that. Um, or I don't feel like doing that. Stop for literally two seconds and say to yourself, let me turn this into a fun adventure. Let me do this for 60 seconds. Let's see how we go. So rather than expecting perfection in the 60 seconds, make a start. Um, at least have a go so that the brain says, ah, oh, I've started something. Let's see how I can make it a little bit more fun. So, for example, there are some people who hate washing dishes. Um, in other words, not using the dishwasher, but just say washing big pans that won't fit in the dishwasher. Have a bit of fun with, with your partner, with your friend, with the children. Uh, blow some bubbles and, um, and, and clean the dishes. And that way you, you, you clean the floor and the dishes in some way. Or, or actually add another one that gets some people out of the comfort zone. Start singing, <laughs> yes. right? If you can sing or anything like that, right? And laugh right. about, you know, how it comes, how it comes out, right? Yeah, so, yeah. And so, so don't say to your mind, I can't. Yeah, exactly. Sing, for example. Yeah. yeah. Take the top three favorite songs and go, I'm going to sing the whole song and just have fun with it. Don't worry about the tone and the pitch. Just exactly. sing because it's what, opens the mind and you're absolutely right when you said we need to make it fun all right great david i could talk to you forever but time is flying all the time and we spend time together so um would you like to share one thing i always like to i always like to guide people to turn learning into doing right away and i always whenever i learn something i ask myself what can i do differently now so what is one thing one practical step that you would like, uh, you know, that you invite everyone here, right, right today when we stream this interview, that you know everyone can take today to expand, to stretch themselves, to become a greater version of themselves right away today. What can they do? I, I think uh, the best way to do it is I'm going to put a challenge out there. Number one, write down your top four strengths. Okay, what are they? These are things that you do naturally. You're just gifted. You've been given these strengths. By the way, everybody has a minimum of six. I'm just choosing four. Okay. So choose your four best strengths. What are they? What do you do easily? What do you enjoy doing? What comes uh, naturally to you when, when you face a challenge? So my challenge is write down those four things. Second step is to apply those four things into any situation where you're finding yourself a little bit uncomfortable, you're a little bit stretched, you're not sure what to do, apply those four strengths to that particular challenge. 
And I promise you, if you do that with all your heart and your mind, you will actually solve that problem. If you don't know what your four strengths are, talk to your best friend, talk to your mum and dad, mum or dad, talk to someone that you trust who's known you because they will tell you what your strengths are. And by the way, when they tell you, don't go, no, I don't have that. Say to yourself, thank you. I didn't realize I had that. <laughs> I love it. Good. I'm definitely going to do it. And uh, after records later on, I'm going to ask you, David, to give me my four. <laughs> but, uh, you know, all of you, I mean, each and every one of you that is with us today, I know you have four, you have six, um, you have more. Um, so, you know, it's, it's beautiful, you know, bring strength into moments where we feel like we need to stretch ourselves, right? So, um, David, I know there's probably a few people that say, if not everyone that is on, on with us today that's saying, oh my God, I'd really love to connect with David and learn more about what his amazing work. How can they connect with you? Send me an email. That's the best way to get a hold of me. Uh, it's a very simple email. It's complexchange at gmail.com. Right. And I think you also have a LinkedIn account. Is it okay yes. for them to reach yes. out on LinkedIn? to get Absolutely. To know Please do. So we'll, we'll, share, we'll share David's LinkedIn link. So if you want to connect with him or as he's saying, just send him an email. He's always just really interested in exploring and connecting with amazing people just like you. So thank you so much, David, for being with us today. And thank you for sharing your wisdom. And again, you know, sometimes you feel like, oh, these are things, you know, yeah, I, I could be doing it, but really bring them into our daily life as men as women, as entrepreneurs, as speakers, and really stretching ourselves on a regular basis or starting to look at things in a different way in our own business or with our clients and their businesses makes all the difference and makes you stand out in great ways as well. So yeah. thank you, David, for being with us. And thank you for being our loyal uh, audience, for being with us on all our interviews. It's great to have you. And again, just we recommend take on David's challenge. Okay, take the action, right? What are your four major strengths and how can you apply them into every challenging situation you're facing? Life is going to become so much more fun and joyful and easy and you're going to stretch yourself. And by the way, a nice side effect is you will grow as a speaker and you will grow your business along the way as well. So thank you, David, for being with us. Thank you all for being with thank us. You. And we'll be on soon again with another hard part inspiring interviews until then all of you have a fabulous day